Good morning. Welcome to our service of worship for uh, Sunday, July 17th. We're just moving quite along here. Another gorgeous day out there. A great day to come and to, to worship God. We welcome those who are joining us online or through our tablet ministry. Before we worship, we recognize that we're gathered on the traditional and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Uh, there's a song service next Sunday, so during our normal worship service, we're going to be singing some of our favorite hymns and worship songs, or at least I hope there's here some of your favorite hymns and worship songs. If they're not, blame Ray and Linda. <laughs> so come and bring your voices and uh, invite people out, and uh, we will be enjoying that. Also, uh, talking about music, we're going to have the Gathering, an uh, uplifting music event on August 6th, and it's going to be at uh, St. John's, New London, 7 o'clock. There's no admission fee. Uh, just come and listen and worship, and uh, there will be refreshments to follow, and we thank Les for leading that for us and coming up with a cool poster. Uh, I'll be on holidays after next Sunday, so July 25th to August 14th, and uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, counting greeters, uh, we need uh, two people for August, and just the way it works out, uh, it'll be only three Sundays because the Harvest Festival is in there. So if you are interested in helping us out with uh, greeting and counting during the month of August, please talk to Betty and uh, she'll hook you up. The annual Getty service is uh, Sunday, August 14th at 11 a.m. So obviously there's no service in New London that Sunday and it's being held at the Getty Memorial Church in Springbrook, which I noticed I messed up and put Springbrook two words there. Uh, the annual memorial service at South Grenville is happening uh, August 14th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, Reverend Stephen Stead will be preaching. The Harvest Festival uh, is happening August 21st, 9.30 at the Credit Union Center, so the arena. Um, so there will be no services here or in New London that Sunday as we're all joining together in the ecumenical service of worship, being led by the United Church here in Kensington this time. Also, I'd like to uh, just note that the flowers here on the communion table and the ones that were coming in are from uh, Eileen Lucas's funeral, and we thank you, Albert, for uh, donating them to the church in, uh, in memory of her and so that we can enjoy them today. And we'll just keep Albert and uh, Eileen's family in your prayers. Any other announcements? All right, let us join and let us worship as we sing Sanctuary. <clears throat>
please join me in the responsive call to worship. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? The Lord is our stronghold. Of whom shall we be afraid? As we wait on the Lord. Let us be strong and of good courage. God has called us together. And we have come. Let us thank God forever. Because of what God has done. We will proclaim God's holy name for God is good. Let us worship God. Amen. Let us join together in singing glory be to God. say our gathering prayer that will begin and when the words turn white on the screen you're invited to join in let us pray God of all beginnings we come today with praise on our lips because your love and purpose embrace the whole world you set us in a world of beauty and bounty and invite us to meet you in the midst of its wonders you call us to love each other in the example of Jesus and to make your world a place of justice and compassion. In this hour of worship, send us your spirit of wisdom and grace so that we can live out the praise on your lips in our day-to-day -day living. Lord Jesus Christ, you were born one of us to show us God's love for us. You came to teach us God's truth and touch us with God's mercy. We confess we sometimes try to push you away we cling to what we think and resist your challenge to open our lives to others. We limit our generosity, convinced we can't give any more. Forgive us, Lord, when we turn away from the example you set for us. All this we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and set free by God's generous grace. Let's join together as we sing, Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh 
Understanding of the Holy Scriptures. God of wisdom, by the leading of your Spirit, we ask that you'd open our minds that we might receive new insight from familiar stories. Open our hearts to grasp deeper truth revealed through the Scriptures and through Jesus Christ, your living Word. Amen. Our responsive reading today is Psalm 15. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors. Who do not lend money at interest, and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. Our Gospel reading today is Luke chapter 10, reading verses 38 through to 42. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And she had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you're worried and distracted by many things. There is need for only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Up until recently, when you went to a baseball stadium and you sat in the seats behind home plate or along the first or third base lines, you always had to be attentive to the game. In some stadiums, they had signs everywhere warning spect spectators to pay attention. The reason for such vigilance was the likelihood of a baseball coming into the crowd from a foul ball. There was also the chance, although much less likely, that a bat might find itself hurled into the stands if a batter lost his grip during a hard swing. Obviously, whether it was a screaming baseball or a helicoptering bat, both could cause harm, perhaps even serious injury to someone on the receiving end. This is especially true if the individual wasn't paying attention and therefore made no effort to get out of the way or to try to defend themselves. However, despite warnings, despite precautions, every year there were always fans inj injured 
by foul balls and wayward bats. Therefore, Major League Baseball mandated screens to be installed from foul pole to foul pole to help keep fans safe. Now, the screen mandate was controversial because many avid fans and traditionalists wanted to keep the status quo. They complained how the screens would obstruct views and take away from the aesthetics of the stadium. And perhaps in some ways, they had a point. However, the safety of the fans outweighed these arguments. The thing is, if you've ever been to a sporting event, whether it's baseball or hockey or basketball or whatever sport it is, you know that there are a lot of distractions. No matter how invested you might be in the game, there are so many things going on in the periphery that it's nearly impossible to keep your attention on the ice or the field the whole time you're there. Whether it's peeking at the scoreboard or reading stat lines on the big screens, whether it's ordering food or drinks from vendors or passing money or purchases down the line to others in your row who have bought something, or turning to talk with your neighbor, or you're simply looking around the stadium to see what's going on. There are just so many ways to be preoccupied and sidetracked. Even if you have the best intentions, even if you want to be focused on the game. These distractions that take you away from the match and cause, cause you to miss important plays or events. And as we continue our journey through the Gospel of Luke, we move from that famous parable of the Good Samaritan, which we read last Sunday, to another popular story. Luke recounts how after leaving the lawyer, Jesus and his disciples continue on their journey and they end up in another village where they're approached by a woman named Martha who invites them into her home. And the customs of the time were centered around hospitality to family and neighbor and strangers alike. Martha was expected to extend hospitality to Jesus and to his closest followers as they came into her village. It was also expected that the woman or women in the house or dwelling would prepare and would serve the food for, or a meal for their guests. And Martha is anxious to ensure that her honored guest and his disciples feel welcomed in her home. Accustomed to her role and duties, Martha does just that as she spends time in the kitchen cooking, getting everything ready for her visitors. Her sister Mary, on the other hand, had different ideas. She didn't follow the social customs or rules of hospitality, and she neglects her traditional duty of assisting her sister. Luke tells us Martha had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. Instead of helping Martha, Mary chooses to sit and to listen to Jesus' teachings, which was highly irregular. Women of this, era, of this era rarely sat with men for instruction or learning, especially if there was hosting work to be done. Not surprisingly, Martha reacts to her sister's choice. Martha's frustrated that she's doing all the prep work and cooking while her sister lounges in the other room. She's stressed as she tries to get everything done for her guests. She's anxious to make a good impression and she's eager to serve, but she's equally upset that the burden of the task is left all on her. I'm sure if we were there, we'd hear the frustrated banging of dishes and Martha muttering under her breath quietly, or maybe not so quietly, criticizing and cursing her sister's inaction and her unwillingness to lend a hand. I imagine she can hear Jesus' teaching in the other room, but Martha doesn't have time to listen. She's distracted by that task at hand. Then maybe she hears Mary ask a question and the sound of her voice just pushes Martha over the edge. Not able to take it anymore, Martha comes stomping out of the kitchen, her apron covered in flour and a spoon in hand. She loudly crosses the floor and stands in front of Jesus with her hands on her hips and asks, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. This is pretty bold of Martha, and not exactly hospitable. Here she is hosting Jesus and his disciples, and she confronts her guest and demands that he intercede and tell Mary to get to work. Talk about awkward. 
Instead of quietly coming and tapping on Mary's shoulder and quietly asking her to come to the kitchen, Martha chooses to ask the guest of honor to solve her problem. Maybe she knew that Mary likely wouldn't listen to her, so Martha thought this might be the best way to deal with the situation. Yet Jesus responds to Martha saying, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Every time I hear this quote from Jesus, I think about that scene from the TV show, The Brady Bunch, where the middle sister, Jan, is complaining to her parents about her older sister, Marsha, in the middle of her rant, she cries, Marsha, 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 as her frustration boils to the top. In some ways, Martha might have felt that same irritation and jealousy that Jan did. But Jesus doesn't repeat Martha's name because he's frustrated with her. He doesn't say Martha, Martha out of condemnation for coming to him with her complaints regarding Mary. Instead, Jesus says her name twice as a show of compassion or pity. He says, Martha, Martha, it's okay. I can see you're frustrated. I can see you're upset, but you don't need to be. Martha, Martha, I hear what you're saying. I can sympathize, but your sister isn't in the wrong. Martha, Martha, your intentions were good, but you missed a once in a lifetime opportunity. Jesus tells Martha that even though she wasn't wrong in offering hospitality, she got so focused on her duties and her responsibilities of hosting that she wasn't able to see what was truly important. She was so distracted by her checklist of things that needed to be done that she didn't recognize the unique opportunity she had to spend time and to learn from Jesus, who was amazingly right there in her home. Jesus then points out that her sister Mary shouldn't be blamed for recognizing what was important in this circumstance. In fact, Jesus tells Martha that Mary has chosen the better part. I'm positive Martha would have been floored by Jesus' words. Based on social customs, Martha knew she had a valid case and argument as she went and approached Jesus. She knew her sister's place was with her in the kitchen while the men sat around talking. I'm sure she was very confident that Jesus would side with her. But he surprises her. Not only does Jesus not agree with Martha, but he also praises Mary for her decision. In some ways, we shouldn't be surprised by Jesus' response. Throughout the Gospels, we witness Jesus questioning and going against certain cultural norms and practices. However, it's somewhat confusing that in this story, Jesus seemingly undermines the cultural practice of hospitality, a central tradition from which Jesus' mission takes advantage of on a regular basis. I mean, if it weren't for the rules of hospitality, Jesus and his followers wouldn't have had places to eat or rest their heads in villages and towns in which they visited. They were reliant on the goodness of people to open their doors to them as they proceeded on their journey. So why does Jesus tell Martha she got things wrong and that Mary made a better choice? In reality, Jesus doesn't criticize Martha for her hospitality. He doesn't tell her that she shouldn't open her doors to strangers or travelers or that she shouldn't offer hospitality to those in need. Instead, he lets her know that all her focus can't be solely on this action. She shouldn't dedicate all her time, all her energy to the tasks at hand and lose sight of what's really important. Mary takes the time to sit at Jesus' feet and to listen to him. She deliberately makes time to hear the word of God through the teachings of Jesus. Martha, on the other hand, was so engrossed in her mission of hospitality that she failed to recognize the need or the importance of taking time with Jesus and listening to him. And this is an important lesson for us. Jesus calls us to serve. He calls us to help those around us. He encourages us to open our doors, whether at home or whether it's at church, to those who are in need, to those seeking shelter from the chaos of the world. He wants us to share his love and to be hospitable to our friends, neighbors, and family. 
just maybe not squirrels that come into the church. No doubt about it, hospitality is important to our ministry. However, more important is that as followers of Christ, we take time to listen. We take time to attend to Jesus' message and the word. For us to be faithful disciples, we need to set aside time to read and to hear the word of God. We need to spend time in prayer and reflect on what Christ is calling us to do. We need to be committed to listening and to receiving guidance from the Holy Spirit. If we're to successfully and faithfully follow our Savior's road that he set out before us. In this biblical passage, we recognize that Martha represents our active life as disciples. And Mary represents our contemplative and reflective life. As you can see from this story, both are needed to be faithful disciples of Jesus. Therefore, may we act in love and hospitality, but may we not get distracted by things around us or even our task at hand. Instead, let us make a concerted effort to be centered on the Word of God by taking time to read and listen to God's Holy Word. And with the strength we receive through God's Word, may we act in Jesus' name as we show His love and his hospitality to those around us. Amen. Let us pray. Savior, you call us to show hospitality because in doing so, we share your love. However, you also warn us that we're not to get so caught up in our duties that we fail to stop to listen and to meditate on your word. Lord, may we set aside time to read your word and listen to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. May we not be distracted by the world around us, and may we take time for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A few things to think about this week. Uh, do I get caught up in life and acts of mission and fail to take time for Jesus? And how can I find a balance between focusing on Jesus' word and showing hospitality to others? Our mission moment this week is looking at a mission that's taking place in Malawi. Presbyterian sharing is empowering women leaders through theological education in Malawi. Bright and capable Malawian, Malawian women often face obstacles in pursuing higher education, including those that arise as a result of economic and gender-based reasons. Recognizing the gender gap and the need for more female leaders, Presbyterian Church in Canada agreed to financially support Miriam and Roslyn, teachers from Blantyre, in competing a two-year part-time Masters of Theology in Ministry Studies. This graduate program is a collaboration between Aberdeen University and Zomba Theological College. With deep faith and eagerness to learn, we look forward to how God will use Miriam and Roslyn in churches, colleges, or other opportunities. May we keep this mission and ministry and these two women in our prayers. The stories of scripture remind us that there are many ways to give in gratitude for God's goodness to us. Whatever we have to give, let us give joyfully, let us give generously, trusting God to do more than we can ever imagine. In the name of Christ, our living Lord. Let's receive our offerings as we pray. Living God, Martha offered the, the work of her hands to Jesus and Mary offered her close attention. And we bring the gifts that we have to offer to you. We pray that you would bless and that you would multiply them and show us how they can best be served for your purposes in our church and in our world. Amen. Let's come together and singing, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet.
Before God, and we pray for the world. I'll say, God, with an open heart, invite you to respond. Open our hearts to you. Let us pray. Loving God, we come before you in prayer, trusting that your power works in the world in ways that we cannot even imagine, calling goodness forward, supporting love, and creating justice, even in situations that seem hopeless to us. Lord, draw on our prayers as signs of your Spirit at work in our lives. God, with an open heart, to you. And God of the world and all its peoples, we pray today for those who lift up their voices in troubled nations, for those working to bring justice, and for those working to negotiate peace. We pray for those bringing aid to the vulnerable and those offering shelter to anyone fleeing violence. Lord, bring those in power to account and inspire them to hear the voices that cry out in pain and desperation. May our world leaders and politicians work for justice, peace, and equity. God with an open heart. God of our everyday lives, we pray today for our community and our neighbors whose lives have been disrupted by the pandemic, by government restrictions, by rising inflation and cost of living, and other realities beyond their control. We pray for those whose livelihoods depend on un undependable weather systems or volatile markets. For those working in jobs and fields where the workload is heavy, the hours are long, and where stress levels are high. We pray for those who are overworked and tired, and those who are anxious to return to their jobs. Savior, we pray for communities dealing with fires, floods, or droughts. We pray for communities that lack safe drinking water or adequate medical care and places where there is high unemployment or a worker shortage. Inspire leaders to combine compassion with good planning and consider the needs of all those who feel desperate. God with an open heart. God of the courageous and compassionate, we pray for those who live out their commitment to the well-being of others day by day, whether in public service, health care, education, social work, community organizations, or environmental concerns. Thank you for their dedication. Support those who feel stress or exhaustion and inspire those who can speak out when they see needs being neglected. God with an open heart. In God of love, we pray for friends and neighbors near and far. We pray for all those who are traveling this summer that they may be safe. For all those on holidays, we pray they'd find rest and relax relaxation. We pray for those in hospital or places of care for those who are sick and those who are on the road to recovery. We pray for those who are anxious or worried about the future and for their health, for those awaiting or undergoing treatments or procedures. Lord, we also pray for those grieving the loss of a loved one. Almighty, we remember in silence those on our hearts 
facing some kind of challenge this day. Lord, draw near to each one in deep need and equip us to support those lives that intertwine with ours, for we are your people, embraced by your love, which we claim in the name of Jesus, God with an open heart. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Savior like a shepherd lead us. go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Go with courage and faith knowing that you are not alone for you go with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, be with you.